You know, I was stationed at Fort Campbell uh, in Clarksville, Tennessee. Uh, and it's about 60 miles from Fort Campbell to Nashville. Uh, not a lot of stuff to necessarily for soldiers to do in, in Clarksville that young people want to do. And so a lot of them would go down to Nashville where there's a, a plenty of bars and clubs and things to go. Uh, but a, as a first sergeant, every Friday before I would let the soldiers go, I gave them a safety briefing. And part of the safety briefing, I specifically discussed drinking and driving, speeding, anything that soldiers could get involved in that could possibly get them in trouble or get them hurt. I tried to cover that and then followed it up with, you know, hey, if you need help, you have help. And I passed out basically little, like business cards that had phone numbers on them. Had their squad leader's phone number on it, their platoon sergeant's phone number on it, and my phone number on it as a first sergeant. I gave my regular safety briefing and, you know, went home for the weekend. I lived on post and um, had a nice, nice evening with my family and, and, and went to bed. And about 2.30 in the morning, my phone rings. and Sure enough, it's, it's two of my soldiers. Uh, saying that they couldn't get a hold of their squad leader and they couldn't get a hold of their platoon sergeant. So they were calling me, asking me for help. And they had gone down to Nashville with another soldier, a friend of theirs from another unit on post, and they had, and they had gotten separated. The friend that they went with was supposed to be the designated driver. And these two admitted, you know, they had been drinking and, uh, you know, they, they needed a way to get home. They didn't have any money left to get a hotel room. Uh, so I said, sure, hey, no problem. I said, I I'll be right there. So I get down there on the 2nd Avenue in Nashville, and the soldiers are standing outside on the corner waiting for me. I loaded them up in the truck, and back off to Fort Campbell we go. You know, I don't, I don't know what they expected. I had, you know, always told the soldiers that, hey, look, you know, if you need help and you're going to, and you're going to call, you know, no matter what time, day or night, what day of the week it is, you know, it's good, you're, you're going to get the help you need. It's going to be non-retributional. I'm just going to be glad that you, that you did the right thing. You know, and, and Monday morning, you know, th there was absolutely no repercussions. Uh, I did talk to the squad leader and the platoon sergeant and explain to them that, you know, I went and picked up two of their soldiers in, in Nashville on Saturday morning. You know, again, it was deeply important to me that I demonstrated, you know, my willingness and my commitment to not only, you know, my statement, uh, but also to you know, my job as a leader in the Army. The level of morale certainly increased. Um, the amount of trust and, and the cohesiveness is really, uh, the cohesiveness of the unit is, is really kind of what, you know, spikes significantly after, after that. It's leading by personal example. And, you know, it's not just me saying, do as I say. It's showing them, look, I'm telling you, you should be doing this. I'm saying this, this is important. And it's important enough, look, I'm doing it too. You know, so you know, the, the expectation is, is that everybody in the entire organization will behave in the same way should the need arise. You know, my personal example you know, sets the stage for others to follow. You know, it, 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 it leads them down the path that I want them to travel.